times you and I and everyone that's listening could have sat here and told people uh, what has what was going to happen in this game, that the team was going to go down. Once they went down by 15, they would cut it to four, six, or eight, about 25 different times after that, then make a stupid turnover, take a dumb shot, uh, give up an offensive rebound. The lead goes back up to 10, and the Warriors never really have a chance, really never have a chance to win this game. I'm sure. Do you think – over under on Steve in post game saying I still believe in this team. Uh, honestly, it's embarrassing if he does. Uh, <laughs> embarrassing. I, I know it's just to save face, and I know he has to say it to keep the team locked in or whatever. But I mean, it's not like the team's locked in anyway. Like, what? What's this? What? What does it hurt Steve Kerr or the locker room for Steve Kerr to just come out and say, "Look, man, the guys just—they don't care. They stink. They didn't play well." And you know, instead of him saying we believe in him or we flush it down the toilet. Right? Would would it be a bad thing if he just came out and was just like, man, the team's just not good enough? <laughs> would it? Wouldn't that be like a really cool Steve Kerr thing to do? It'd just be like, hey, man, the team's not good enough. So I don't know what you guys want me to say, right? Because then that maybe that lights a why fire. Why do you think? Why do you think he? Why do you think he coddles them so much? Yeah, I have no uh, idea. because because <laughs> the, no the, idea. the way here's the way it comes across to me. Tell me if you agree or disagree with me. To me, the positivity coaching feels like a guy who is worried about breaking his team by going full. What, what is, what does Fitz call it? Scottish Steve. <laughs> you know, it's funny because he has no issue lighting up Draymond over the years or the guys in various ways. But, you know, for, for this team, he's very in tune with making sure guys feel protected. Right. And he's still doing it. You know, like I, do you think he was happy with their effort tonight? Come on, man. you know, like no chance. And it's still going to be the same sort of thing, but I'm trying to figure out why he's coddling them so much. I actually have no idea. I was, I was hoping that you would explain to me. Um, you're, you're saying maybe they're a little fragile. Maybe he doesn't want to go at certain players. I don't, yeah, I, I truly I, I, don't know. Here's what here's what here's what I think. I think he doesn't want to go. So I'm gonna put up the box score right now just so we can have the names in front of us because that'll help it out. I don't think he gives a shit about going at Draymond or Steph because they can handle it. I don't think he wants to go at Kuminga, Pajemski, Trace, because they're young, you know? Like what, 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 those dudes, they're trying to develop at this point, right? They're not guys you like you light up that way. And so then we get to, you know, agent 22. And do you think 22 has the mental, like, come on, man, how many years have we watched this team coddle him? You know? So I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say it's one thing or another, but it just screams like he's coaching this team because he's afraid to light up, light them up a little bit. Yeah, see, that's maybe that's that's the angle I, I think this show takes because that's something we haven't talked about. Is I, I don't know if it's a I don't know if I'm trying to say Kurt's doing one thing right or wrong because I'm sure there's a great reason for him not to light him up in in public. That's also not really what he does. Um, that's kind of more a um, that's like a Mike Malone thing or like maybe even a Spolster thing. Kind of more of like the hardo yeah. hardo coaches, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen throughout the years that what Steve Kerr does works. So I'm kind of hesitant to say, like, he should be doing this or that. I just find it interesting when we've watched the same game so many times um, that, yeah, I mean, he's going to come out and say he believes in the team. But what is there to believe in with this team? Um, I don't even know what to blame this specific game on. Like, if we were to go down the line here, I thought Draymond was pretty bad, especially offensively um pods right we've talked about the rookie wall i think he's hit it wiggins you talked about it he's been terrible all season again so it's like just the same old stuff again nothing different from anything we've talked about the last few months um to me the 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 more fascinating issue is man how do you go come out and you just go down 15 to 4 that's crazy just crazy at it home was it's crazy with just no energy man and honestly, I'm going to keep going back to number 22. I'm going to keep going back to number 22 on this one. I thought Steph came out kind of flat. Draymond played awful. Those guys are also older. I, fair or not, I, I you just can't expect them to bring it the same way they do every night. 
You know who I do expect to bring the energy every night? The 29-year-old who's on a big contract, who's not old, and he's not young either. He should be in his prime. And he too often than not, he's a passenger on this team. Like, I really don't understand why they kept him across the trade deadline. And this is what I feared would happen. They fell in love with a five-game span at the trade deadline, and here we are again. It's the same old... <sighs> Well, if we just, if we give, he'll figure it out. That's right. Like, stop. You're chasing 2022 way too hard, man. It, like, this is an expensive team. You need the guys who are not 35 or 21 to be far more consistent contributors on this team. End yeah. of story. End of story. I mean, they, they've, Clay's kind of back to being, I mean, he had a decent shooting game tonight, but the easy fix is you just got to start Clay again, <laughs> right? But then it's like he's been playing so well off the bench. But I mean, you've got three zeros on the in the starting lineup on offense, right. man. You've got three zeros. Like the, the Wiggins stuff, I think it's fine. I agree with you, but you got three zeros, and those three zeros aren't really getting any better. Like, it, it isn't going to pop up tomorrow, and you know Wiggins isn't going to suddenly score eighteen points on um on Wednesday night. You know, Paz isn't going to score 15 points on Wednesday night. Draymond not scoring 20 points on Wednesday night. Like you got three dudes that just, just cannot score. So I guess, you know, maybe that's the problem, right? You get more scoring punch in there. But I don't know. They look so lifeless. It's kind of sad. It's just kind of sad yeah. to watch this team. You're, you're, a ten, you're a nine seed. Sorry. you Now you're a 10 seed. But you're a nine seed coming in. Big win in LA. And you come back. You play a team. You said it. OG Ananobi's out. Julius Randle's not playing. Um the, the Knicks aren't Josh Hart played all 48 minutes. All hey, love 48 you. minutes. Mc, McBride played, I know it says 47, but I think it was 46. I think, it's, I think he technically got two minute breathing. Miles there. McBride averages like 1.3 points a game, dude. He scored 29 points tonight. They played. I mean, well, let's not even talk about scoring. They didn't even bother guarding a guy that's, that's. I mean, like, let's be honest. And, and I'm he's not good, at least so far in his NBA career, and at 29 points. People love being like, they're too small. They're too small. <laughs> to be fair, they could use more size at Who's multiple positions. But look at the Knicks lineup. How tall Jalen Brunson? 6'2"? <laughs> On a good day? Is he even McBride 6'1". Dante, we're, the entire Warrior fan base was complaining that he was too small at shooting guard last year. He was a small forward tonight. Uh, and Josh Hart, 6'4". Playing power forward for them. Like they were, you're running into a team that plays the same bizarro lineups that we all <laughs> complain that Kerr plays, you know, right. all guards. Well, it's all four guards, four guard lineup. What is this? Blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> look, man, if you're going to play that way, at least play like your fucking hair's on fire. At least play hard, you know? And that's the thing that kills me with it. It's like, all right, they play harder, they beat the Knicks. Does that change? Everything in the playoffs, no. Yeah. But I think at least you and true. I can be like, you know what? True. They gave it their all. I can respect it. This, true. this shit's just unrespectable. It's just that, non-respectable basketball. It's true. It, it, it really – I'm I'm really – I'm with you on that. Where it's, it is – like, end of the day, They let's say they play better. And instead of 15-4, to four, it's 15-11, and the Warriors win this game by three points. Like, it doesn't change that they're going to be playing team, first-round exit, maybe tops. Um, but at the end of the day, like this stuff is disrespectful to the fans. Like it, it's just like, uh, do you, do people even want to watch this stuff? Like, why should people pay to watch this stuff? Uh, why should Joe Laker pay the amount of money that he's paid the amount of money for this team? Honestly, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we, 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 we see the owners in the, in the Bay in Bay Area. spent a lot of money. A lot of teams spent a lot of money, even the giants. And uh, and the, and Joe Lacob's out here, and, and he's spending it, and the just, team just doesn't seem like they care. Honestly, it doesn't seem like they care. You make a point about Steph and Draymond where they come out slow, or maybe in Draymond's. You know, and and maybe tonight. maybe I'm well, being like too nice to them. Fair. Maybe I'm being too nice to them. I mean, it, it is fair. I actually think you're right. It is fair. Like we we talk a lot about Steph, like like try harder to score in the first quarter, but it's like, man, there is a reason. Like he just can't be doing. Maybe that's the. Game. Maybe that's the reality of if you assemble a roster where you need 2016 Steph when he's 36, you're in the you're the play-in, you know? Like that's just the reality of it. You're gonna be a play-in team if that's what you need, because 
this team genuinely needs Steph to be playing at, you know, world beater MVP level to be a good team on a consistent basis. And I, and I, you know, I'll pull up the standings right now. Oh God. It's not even that I, I'm just, I'm going to run down it. OKC, you got three young guys who can get you 40 any given night. Minnesota talent across the board and Edwards, a superstar cat, Awesome, you know, go. They got guys across the board. The Nuggets got the best player in the league and two other guys who can go for 40 in a playoff game. The Clippers, four all stars. You know, if Kawhi doesn't show up, they still have Harden and Paul George. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of talent. Pelicans, two clear all stars. Kings, two clear all stars. Mavericks, two clear all stars. Suns, three clear all stars. Now get to the <laughs> Warriors, and you know. It's Steph Curry and role players. And maybe that's like what sucks about this is nothing about this is changing tomorrow, March 19th. Nothing about this is changing in April. Like we just got to fucking ride it out until the off season. That's the reality of it. No. That's that's kind of like now I'm back to being frustrated about the trade deadline where they're like, we like what we're seeing and hmm. we'll figure it out in the off season. All right, cool, man. Cool. Yeah. You know, they're going to be in the 9-10 game against the Lakers. They might win that. Then they're going to be against a 7-8 loser. They might win that. And then they make the playoffs. And honestly, they could win a round. They could, you know. All of this comes together, and it still comes back to like, but for what? They're still not going anywhere, you know. Yeah. The comments point out the uh, the Rockets have won five in a row, by the way, and they're three games behind the Warriors, so – um, so there you go. That that's I'm not, that's I'm, not I'm not entertaining that. <laughs> <laughs> Jabari hey, Smith at the fair, five man. doesn't move you. <laughs> I forgot Shangun's actually out for the season. That's funny. And they've won five in a row. Ooh. I, I thought that injury was worse than it was when I saw it, to be honest Ooh. with you. But Ooh, yeah, might be might be good for the uh, for good for the Rockets, you know. You don't want the guy that doesn't play defense in the middle. And anyway, um Bro, the, they, can't, uh, they can't score without Shangun. <laughs> Jalen Green, you're not buying the leap, you're not buying the the scoring leap by Jalen Green uh, here. I'm I'm not. I am selling. Um, good, smart man to sell. Uh, the game. Back to the game. Back to kind of where the Warriors are. Um, it feels like they've probably come. These type of games make me feel like they've come to the. Like they've admitted to themselves, they're probably not better than who they are right now. You know how with with championship teams, especially championship teams that have won a lot of them, like these, like this team, they always believe that they can be more than who they are. They always believe, like you know, yeah. you just Clay, like you know, we're gonna we're, we're good enough, we're still good enough, we want to win a championship. But it, it feels like this team knows, like they know deep down, or maybe not even deep down. I don't think you, they even tell us anymore that they think they can win it all. They know like they're just not good enough, and it feels like they play like that, where they're just like there's like Deuce McBride or Miles McBride or whatever his name is makes like three theories in a row, and they're just like, yeah, well, it's gonna be that type of night. I just it, it, that's the, I think that's the even sadder part, where it's just like I think they know they're not good enough. I feel like we're just waiting for the off season where there's gonna be a roster shift. That's where I'm at with it because it's if they don't shift this roster, then they are just using Steph for a soft rebuild. Like that's the alternative. And I really don't want to go there to be honest with you, but like what, like, yeah, playing, <laughs> they're, they're playing a bunch of guys on rookie deals around Steph and Draymond and Wiggins and clay. So I don't see how they trade Wiggins. Someone in the chat says they could have dumped him at the deadline. They're not going to get anything for him. You just got to move on and call it a day and find someone a different way. Sorry. Sorry you can't get the home run trade where you flip him for Giannis. You know? Yeah. Get rid of him and then start trading your picks or something to get something better. But, yeah. like, enough of this, oh, we can figure it out and we'll get him back going. Well, you missed your window. It is. Yeah. Uh, the dump stuff does feel like not a Warriors type of thing where they don't. No, it's the thing. They, they, unless they have to, right? That's the thing. They keep like doubling down, thinking they can fix it. And I'm just like, dude, just, just take the dump. Call it a day. Take the call, dump. 
<laughs> Call, flush like, it. Yeah. Take a dump. Flush it. Literally. Dude, just move on. Do we need to see this next year? Like, honestly. What what would you what would you think if they brought back this roster with a veteran on a mid level exception? I don't even know who that would be off the top of my head. I, I, like, I literally, but like the I, same I, roster, and they just add like they trade Sarich and GP two for a different eighth man. I, I might podcast about the Giants. I mean, it's like it's, it's how games. many more? How, yeah, Kelly Oubre, right? <laughs> exactly. And it's like how many how many different times do we have to watch? Like at least just admit it's not working and shake it up. Well, we watched the same stuff last year. We watched the same stuff this year. So two years, it, it really two years. is two years in a row, right? Like it's really become. I, I think this year maybe there's a little. You know, we're we're watching Kaminga take a lead. We're watching Pajemski. He's have a rough go of it, but he's been good overall all sure. season. Like I just I just think like that. Trace Jackson Davis. We'll get to like some of the more fun stuff tonight. Nine for mm-hmm. nine tonight. So like I think that stuff makes this season a little more bearable than last season. But I mean, you're right. It's still the same games. <laughs> the basketball games are still the same. I, I think this this season's been a little more fun. I, I think too. But uh, yeah, I mean, net net, it's all been kind of just been a hard watch, man. I just I walk in here pretty pretty annoyed just watching this game. And uh, by the end of the game, you're kind of zoning out, right? Like they're, the Warriors are down by eight with four minutes left or so. And did you think they were going to win? Did you think they were going to no, come back? No. Yeah, there, there's been a lot there of was times. Mid, mid-third, I thought they had a shot. But yeah. when that um, that run where they got it to four or four. six just got yeah. shut down, like three, three, and I'm like, all right, it's over. <laughs> right. And there have been times. Like I watched the Nuggets versus um, – Mavs game yesterday, the Saturday mm-hmm. afternoon primetime game, and the Nuggets play a terrible game. They go down by twelve, and then with like <clears throat> with like four and a half minutes left, they tie the game at the end. They they should they could have won easily. They had a wide open look at it. Murray missed it. Kyrie made a crazy shot, but like that used to be the Warriors, right? The Warriors would be down by ten all game. Then the last four minutes, they would just close it. But, all right, the game's over. Now you watch the Warriors; they're down by ten all game. Four minutes left, and they're like, man. <laughs> can they even get a good shot up <laughs> like uh, if Steph goes in the lane he's gonna get hit by two people no call you know what I mean and and then now Draymond gets it he throws it to someone and then the other guy's going the other way or or Clay breaks a shot or Wigan takes a dribble and misses two yeah. free throws you know what I mean like it's just it's a comedy of errors of this team it's it, it's we used to be watching the nuggets of the today's nuggets and now it's like it feels like you're watching a lottery team which you know this team is closer to the lottery than it is to the uh, to the to the yeah. to the one seed, right? So, pick a direction, motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we while we pay some bills, yeah. can, let's get some goons on the other side. I just, let's let's let people sound off a little tonight. All right, um, the Light Years Podcast. We are brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks. Now tonight would have been a good night for Price Picks. Keep you engaged the whole game. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It's got to be more than that now, uh, with all the light years goons uh, signing up. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action. While you watch your favorite sports and players, you just pick more or less on two or more player stats, and you watch the winnings row in. You can win up to a hundred x your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars. Into a thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, <laughs> the Warriors fight for a playoff home court. Fight for the nine seed. There's no strong excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your latest hoops knowledge into serious cash conference tournaments are here it's actually already done we got selection sunday yesterday which means biggest moments in college basketball getting closer who are you uh who are you picking sam you do your final four yet did you uh i will tell you wednesday i'm not ready tonight Mm -hmm. to get my picks which is bs for i haven't done my bracket so i have my more on all reed shepherd after sam told me that i would like reed shepherd i watched a 30 second highlight of reed shepherd i am now picking more on all Reed Shepherd props uh, throughout the uh, NCAA tournament, you can be a part of the action on Prize Picks for both men's and women's, and women's, aka all Caitlin Clark uh, uh, numbers props for the women's college basketball tournament. So download the over. app today. Use code Take the over on all her games. 
It's easy, easy, especially shot attempts. I've been looking at those. Um, shoots a lot. She shoots a lot. A lot of them go in. It. <laughs> Download the app today. Use code LightYears for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Uh, again, download the app today. Use code light years for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. And we are brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Set, see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly when what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Uh, my, my team, uh, is back in about a week and a half. They just signed the reigning NL Cy Young winner. I will be using game time wins, 85 wins. He is a three war pitcher, maybe four, uh, 85 wins and the three and the third wild card. Uh, I will be there. I will be there on opening night or sorry, opening day. Uh, I will be there, uh, using game time. Uh, to get tickets right up to the event. The good thing about it is you can actually get deals on the tickets right up to the start. Even an hour after it starts. I know they got a lot of laggers in here. Uh, it's the place to find last minute seats. You can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for basketball, baseball, concerts, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, uh, and use light years for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-I-G-H-T, Y-E-A-R-S for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. <laughs> comments. I want to I wanna give a shout out to whoever in the comments is saying I had more fun watching Corey McGinney in 2009. That is such a fucking lie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely Dude, no one liked watching Corey McGinney live. You didn't like the... Uh... The, uh, he was an elite foul draw. You remember oh. that? He was like foul grifting before foul grifting. He, he, yeah, he, he invented grifting. Uh, I want to ask you this before, because we got a lot of callers. And I want to get to all of them because okay, okay, okay. why not? Let's get to it. Why are you so excited about the giant? Like, <laughs> I, I, I just want to be, I, I just want to, let me preface this. The okay. Warriors are <laughs> 17 and 10 since they made the lineup change around Decky's absence, all statistics point to they're like the 10th best team in the NBA, which is probably an accurate rendition of who they are. They're going to end up in the play and they may or may not make the playoffs, but they're like, they're not a bad team, but they're also not a particularly good team. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're lamenting them, mm -hmm. but the reality is they're kind of a middle of the road team and kind of disappointing and such. I don't think there's anything that indicates the giants with Blake Snell will be anything more than middle of the road. You so know, it just, it's, it's the, uh, it's the tone difference, you know, that's all I'm getting at. I think, um, and, and it's also where the teams that are right where they've been the last few years. Um, I actually don't even know if Blake Snell is, Blake Snell is that good of a pitcher. <laughs> Honestly, I know he won the Cy Young, but he probably doesn't end up being a Cy Young pitcher this year. The problem with the Giants is they were super boring, right? And the uh, the, the Warriors, they, they've they got a guy that's probably the most exciting <laughs> player of all time. And so just the bar at minimum for the Warriors has just been excitement. But we've been so used to the Warriors winning. For the Giants, the bar is that at least for the last few years, is that they're just so boring. Even that 107 win season, you were there. 107 wins. Did you find that team exciting? Was that team exciting? Even though they won 107 win, 107 lot, games. A lot of lot of Gabe Kapler flexing with aviators on. No, it, it, that was it, not exciting. Darren Ruff, you know, remember Darren Ruff? You you remember you you because you're your Oakland A's guys. Like you were telling me, like, hey man, like this is a Farhan type. Like he loves. High OBP, right? Like, like just sure. big, stocky-looking guys, like not really athletic type type he of like, dude. Yeah, fat guys are undervalued. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, a, that's his thing. I mean, maybe they are, but I, I think with the Giants, like, I don't know if I care if they win 83, 85, 80, 87. I don't know if I care too much. Like, I would like them to make the playoffs. I don't think it's that hard. They probably should. They're spending a lot of money. They're in the tax now. Um, but it's 162 games. It's baseball. Can we just make it so that I can watch a baseball game every night? You and I watch sports all day. 
what six hours a day <laughs> you may be less because you you got more stuff to do than me but it's like i just want to be able to watch a baseball game and have fun man the giants have not made that possible for me um so i'm excited for that that's that's what i was got that's how got I, it. I say it i see i see where you're going with this and, and honestly that kind of ties to the issue with the warriors which is i didn't need you to run back last year i really didn't like i don't <laughs> like just just shake it up man shake up the roster a little bit it's time for 22 to go. It, thank you. Thank you for 2022. Go go to whatever city you're going to play in. You'll never play another relevant basketball game in your life outside of the Warriors, but you'll be a legend anytime you visit here. We'll all pretend that your 14 absences don't matter. Just get out of here. Anyway, I, I think I think that that's a good that's a good comparison to I think where the war, what the Warriors should do this offseason actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Warriors have gotten to the point where they are like the, the game tonight was it was boring. It really it right. really was. Which, man, Steph 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 Curry Steph Curry Steph Curry will never be boring. Um, Light Years Podcast sponsored by brought to you by Steph Curry Under Armour. It will never be boring. But they are finding a way. Uh, they are finding a way because we're watching so much of the same stuff year night in night out. So, um, no Blake Snell is not Blake Snell is not Steph Curry. Sam he's not. Neither is Logan Webb. No. Neither is Jung Hoo Lee. But, but uh. But we'll see if they'll win 85. But they're at least a change from last year. Yep. You know? Yep. Like, maybe mid-season, you're like, this sucks. Fuck yep. off. <laughs> like, Robbie Ray is on the way mid-season. Sam, come on. <laughs> I hear, not, I, is he good? Is he good? I have no idea who he is. He good? Sion. Sion, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's I in mean, your division, I, though. But I don't, Seattle, know, I don't know. I don't know how he – I don't know uh, how he's going to look like uh, post-injury, but he is objectively – or has been a very yeah. good player. Yeah. All right, let's get to it. We got we got a long line here for the goons. Let's go. All right, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna let Ebony lead off. We got we got some we got some people we haven't heard from in the queue. By the way, I like it. Hey yo, how are y'all? What's up? Hey, all right. Sometimes sometimes oh. it's therapeutic. That was that was that was tough. Can I just say it felt like TJD was the only person trying the entire for the entire game like anytime he touched the court i felt like he actually wanted to play and he was trying to prove something but not in the sense of like you know he can't get on the floor so he's trying to prove something he's trying to prove that like you know almost carried the team on his back it felt like with his energy off the bench so that's that's what i got to say about tjd and then uh, i guess I feel bad saying this, but how do we feel about GP2 at this point? Oh, wow. I'm not saying he's bad because he's not. He's still a great point of attack defender. But dang. I mean, he hits two threes and it, it, it goes in and it's like, all right, cool. But like, I don't know. Like he does one of those. He fouls a three point shooter. It feels like at least once or twice a game. And yeah. then, you know, it's that's six points because then, you know, it's one of those terrible closeouts. So GB2 looking rough lately. Not sure how to feel about that. And then Wiggins is just kind of ass. Like he's, he's just <laughs> not kind of just go in. He, he is ass and he looks like a, a freaking stick on offense and defense and it feels like empty minutes and then moody gets injured and you can't replace him so it's just like it's just frustrating watching like the roster fall apart and then you know steph and draymond and clay it kind of feels like they're mentally tired at this point like forget the physical part of it it feels like they can't mentally lock in for you know an 82 season 82 game season and has nothing to do with like their capabilities they're all still really smart players but to have to pick up the slack of like 21 year olds and pick them up to actually like you know play hard feels like you know they're kind of exhausting what the core has left on a season that's going nowhere and the last thing i'll say i don't know if i want to see them in the playoffs like it's kind of <laughs> exhausting at this point. Like I don't even know if I want to see them in the play-in either because you know 
if they're playing the Lakers, what's the point? What's the point? Like, they want LeBron. Like, I mean, LeBron kind of has to be in the playoffs because he's LeBron and, you know, his 50th season or whatever it is at this point. So that's that's all I got, guys. That's a great call. Yeah, A lot to hit on there. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing I, I, I want to pull up here is, so I was curious, GP2's played 38 games since he got traded back to the Warriors. And I think that's the issue right there. I don't know if he's washed. I don't know if he can rediscover what he had in that 2022 season, but I do know he's just not available enough. Like he, he made mistakes that look like a guy who just hasn't gotten to a rhythm half the time. So I was just like, yeah, it is, it is what it is. And like, you know what, if he can't be available the way he used to, then, you know, that's, that's also a problem, right? <clears throat> yeah. I, I, that was actually going to be the G- GP two was uh, the one I was going to talk about actually of the few things that she mentioned um, because he's such a lovable player. Right. Um, I, I just, we really don't just, uh, we really don't have anything ever quote unquote bad to say. I will say, and, and the comments brought this up. It's hard to be annoyed at someone that plays so hard. Um, the problem with the Warriors is that they don't play hard. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, you and I sat here and, we're, you know, we're talking about the team just not, not playing hard. Man, GP2 pay, plays hard, right? TJD plays hard. Pajemski plays hard. Like, these. the problem is that you're relying on these guys, man. You're relying on, like, it's, why are you relying on Pajemski to play, to, to, do, to play way better yeah, than he's, he should he's be playing, right now? He's playing bad right now. There's no yeah. way around that either. But it's like, you, you're relying on him. You shouldn't be. You mm-hmm. shouldn't be. He's not Wemby. But, you know, back to your point about Wiggins. But anyway, we're not going to do that again. Let's go. Next one. <laughs> Next one. Next one. G- I agree, though. is better than Wiggins. That's what we got in the chat right now. What's Glenn Robinson up to? Shit, man. Let's keep moving. I love TJD. TJD was the bright spot tonight. We probably should hit on that, but it is what it is. Somebody will bring him up. All right, Guru. <laughs> What's up, guys? I guess first time caller to playback, though I have called on Spotify before. So nice, yes. nice. So, I knew I recognized the name. Yeah, what do you got for us? Uh, wow. You know what typified the game was uh, late in the game when Wiggins got that steal, and he was just coasting to the rim, and McBride just sprinted back and fouled him. That was, he could have easily finished. That was that, insane. That was insane. That was insane. And I mean, that just like typified what Andrew Wiggins has been since the championship season, right? Like just inconsistent, like, oh my God. And yeah, TJD's, he, he looked like the only guy who who was trying tonight. And just a, just a pitiful performance. Draymond played bad too, by the way, like uh, Awful. Multiple, multiple turnovers. Like uh, dropped pass off the Chris Paul outlet that was, should have been an easy finish. Multiple missed layups. God damn it! I, I I'm starting to lose it with this team. I I really am. And like I, I want to echo what I what the previous caller said. Uh, I I don't want to see this team in the playoffs. Like it's <laughs> it's, it's over. like I, I I don't see them beating the Lakers anyways. Like a full strength Lakers like. People don't know if AD played Saturday. I think the Lakers win. I sure. think the Lakers win if the if AD plays sure. like the entire game. Right. That's, that's there. You go. You got your playing formula right now. Poke him in the eye again. Yeah. Get through that matchup. <laughs> and then we then we poke KD in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> then Jokic, uh-huh. you're getting it too. That's, you know, that's that's all I got right now, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I and I tweeted <laughs> I tweeted to Andy how many fake comebacks did we have in this game? Oh, those are like, you. It, 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 yeah, oh yeah, it, it was probably ten by the time the game was over. They had two more since you tweeted me. By the way, they had two more. They had two more. I really bought with the one in the third quarter when it was ninety nine ninety five. I was like, oh, here it comes, here it comes. It did not come. Miles McBride, <laughs> swish. 
Brunson swish back down 10. DiVincenzo swish. Yeah, exactly. Hard contested layup. By the way, what's your guys' take on GP2 not uh, uh, always switching on screens, especially when Steph is the target defender? Uh, I mean, I saw that a lot in the fourth quarter. Obviously, they're, they're targeting him, right? Like the, sure. uh, McBride's coming over, screening, and getting uh, getting Steph on the switch. Like, should GP2 make a little bit more of an effort to stay on Brunson? Like, what's your guys' take on that? Or just, should they just double? I think, I mean, they, they tried doubling when it was, like, too little too late, right? But, yeah. I don't even know where to go with their defensive strategy. In general, like <laughs> half the time, like like it does. Feel, like okay, so back during the dynasty days, they just switched everything all the time, right? Like they they had the guys to do it. It does feel like now they just they mix up their coverages all the time. I don't know. The chat the chat's right. Is there a defensive strategy? I, maybe. I don't know. No, I, I Hard probably it, it probably tells me that maybe he's not fully healthy. He's not comfortable maneuvering through those screens but like that that the point is that they also don't have like it's not just Steph being the worst defender it used to be Steph was the worst defender which you can get away with because Steph is actually not a bad defender he he's just not, is small and, and then you just have four elite guys around him but right now the Warriors have maybe one or one elite defender on the floor and then after that it's like which Wiggins is showing up tonight is GP2 on the floor you know what I mean like it's not like, like, who's Clay guarding? Because if Clay's guarding a larger wing, he's fine. But if he's guarding a guard, he's screwed, right? So it's like they're kind of just hoping and praying defensively, and and that's part of the that's part of where Steve Kerr probably can't do anything. So you just got a lot of guys that just can't play defense. I don't know what you do. I, I forgot whether it was in the second quarter or third quarter. Uh, the comment, by the way, uh, La China and I forgot the other. Like they did a tremendous job on the broadcast today, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I think it was in the same and, and then his, and Wiggins the scores his first point of the game on a free throw. Like that I mean, that just typified like, yeah, we can't win when Wiggins is scoring in single digits. And that's that's what happened tonight. So. No, I mean, I mean, he needs to be the second best player on this team and and, and hasn't been that girl. Appreciate you. Call yeah. in more. Call in, my man. Yeah. Uh Andy, you wanna you wanna hit that under yeah. arm before you to everyone else? By yeah, the way, Mick Walters, cool. Paratosh, Bobby, we all see you. We're gonna get to you right after this. The OGs, the OGs. By the way, I'm watching Jalen Brunson tonight, and uh I just I, I like really him. need I really need Brandon Pajemski to end up being like bright Jalen Brunson. I know it's a years, years away. Um, but I just it, it makes so much sense. Um just makes so you can sense. see how like that's who he wants to be like. He said, like, that's the player I model my game after. Try, try, like lefty kind of slow like using his body for angles that sort of Her, stuff Herky, yeah ex- literally yeah. all of that and iq he's got the iq to do it um again brunson's a lot older it took it didn't take brunson a year to get there it took brunson quite a few years to be to become who he is today right yeah. so so but um i don't know i i know i i feel like i'm always really hard on on kamingas in my mind where he can be and i've been less so for Bajemski. just I, I just see more I just see a little more there, but we'll see. Um, we're Light Years Podcast brought to you by Under Armour. Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything, and the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce grip and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up, showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player, rep his shoes on off the court. Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp tech makes the shoe feels like feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction and emergency brake you don't even notice. Steph, Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of a sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. Speaking as someone who respects Curry Brand, let's bring McWalter up here. Let's go. I haven't heard from McWalter in a while. What you got for us, boss? Oh, man. It's been so long he forgot how to use the app. <laughs> oh, no. I know how to use the app. <laughs> I know how to use the app. 
<laughs> What's up, oh, man? Dude. We've been missing oh, you, Connor. This, this was, this was not great. I, it just felt like when Dre didn't get a couple calls during that scoreless six-minute start, and he started pounding the ball on the ground each time, having a little baby tantrum. Those are signs when Draymond <laughs> quits on our team. All right. And it used to be Draymond would quit on the team and he'd get ejected. So I guess that's some mental health progress for him that instead of quitting on the team by getting thrown out, better health pro quitting on the team years. by just not playing hard and being a, I don't know, and put your derogative word in of choice. Um, but, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just not great. Um, he, he just needs to tweak how he handles those situations more, I guess. Um, because it, it just he was not useful. They could, should have just benched him the rest of the fourth when they sat him down in the middle. Bringing him back in was pointless, and it just it was just awful. And isn't that isn't that kind of part of the problem though? Because I don't disagree with you. They should this he played like he should have just took the night off, right? He looked like he you were talking about who, he looked like who a they starter have? who didn't have his stuff, and you should pull him after the fourth or fifth. Hey, you don't but got who, it, man. But to that point, do they have the guys to just be like, Dre, tonight's not your night. We're going to go with the young guys. They have Trace. Yeah, and, and that's, that's about it. it. That's, and that's it. the problem because Sarge played himself out of being usable. Um, and we don't have any other bigs. So unless we want to continue to stay small, um, which may – work actually um if if any of our quasi three fours could hit a shot um uh, you know Kaminga had some mid-rangers going today and got us some post scoring but you know wigs was him his you know didn't care self either and so the problem is if dre doesn't care and wigs doesn't care and joku's not playing defense and gb2 <laughs> looks a little little slow then we're really up a creek on defense like the those are mm-hmm. like our our four best defenders and are like, Oh yeah, no, none of them came tonight and against a team that plays really good defense. Um, and so it, it, a team that plays good defense means that we're going to have to have a hard time scoring, which means that our defense needs to be on point. And instead they light us on fire with their, with Nick pride. I mean, what's the story of the words? Like, Hey, who's the scrub who lights us up tonight? That's like a common theme of the season, right? Like, Hey, tonight scrub who lit us up was this guy. And it's just, ugh, you know, it's just frustrating. And I, I, I'm honestly worried about the 11th. Three games, given how the Warriors like to trick things away, given that we're playing Houston one more time, like, we could really blow it. I, it's not, it's not inconceivable. And apologies for the audio if it's bad. People are saying it's done. So cut me off. Um, do you not do you not feel like some of our previous callers were uh, Guru and Ebony just said, "Hey man, we don't even bother." You know, we don't even want to see them in the. But you, you but you're you're good with the you're you're good with that. You at least want to see them in the playing round. Out of principle, I can't not see them in the playing round. I'm not going to root for the we don't even care to show up to the plan. But I get the logic. I do get the <laughs> logic. Give me pain until the end of the. The, the day you know i i will watch the play in game it's a one one game and you're in that stuff is so good for sports it just doesn't get any better than that steph's gonna be locked in i know it'll be frustrating but whatever i, I give me the play in round give me the lakers don't don't be playing la whatever just give it to us tachyon what's up man it was so fucking mid bro it's so fucking mid bro it's like the offense is average pretty much on pretty much on all metrics. And the defense is only average because basically we have two Hall of Famers who are old and can't carry all the time. And I'm like, oh my God. The only reason why I'm somewhat excited is because Trace Jackson Davis is designed to become a little bit more of a bright spot. And the only reason why I don't say like just start. Trace Jackson Davis entirely is because I think, as you mentioned earlier, Sam is like Wiggs is fucking terrible and just needs to go back to deported to Canada again. <laughs> and and Jonathan Kaminga isn't a consistent enough wing in order to 
as a shooter or at least slash an offensive threat. And it's like, okay, we can't have two inconsistent offensive players on the wings to play next to Trace. And I'm like, it's just going to be a whole fucking mess, bro. It's yep. so terrible. Yep. They so, re- like, they what's don't really the have consistent options. They, they really don't. It's all a personnel thing. And the it's like, oh, like, why doesn't Steph play all the minutes in the first quarter? Why doesn't Dre do more on defense? It's like, because they're fucking old, bro. It's yeah. like, it is what it is. <laughs> get, them, <laughs> like, get them a more mm-hmm. consistent contributor. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Tasha, before we get you out of here, I need your prediction on Giants wins so Andy and I can make a new bet. <laughs> you really want this new bet? Oh man. Uh give us a number. Give us an official number. Give us a number to bet off of. The official number is Giants and five against the doctor. That's all that matters. I was I wanted it. I wanted a number in the the eighties. I didn't think you were going to be such a. Doer I was going to gonna say eighty seven, but okay. Wow. I was going to say eighty seven. I was going to say eighty four and a half is a good number. Eighty seven is a great number. Tyler's t- okay. Eighty. Tyler says eighty four in the chat. Tashan, appreciate you. Or he says eighty four. Eighty four and a half is a fair number. I will take the under. On eighty four and a half. Eighty four and a half wins. That's not that many wins. I think I think you're going to enjoy eighty three. <laughs> I need to give you. We're gonna set. We're set the line eighty four and a half. We'll come up with terms. They win eighty five or above. You win. They win eighty four below. I win. The Giants winning eighty three games this season would be a. They they have. <laughs> it's really not asking for much. How many games did they win last year? They won seventy eight games last year, and really everything went to shit. So whatever. Do better. Paratosh, what do we got? There's not a lot of huge juice to 83 and 85. Just vibes. So <laughs> might be the third. It might be a World Series trip. You know, ask the Arizona Diamondbacks. You know, you get in there, you get, you get <laughs> yeah. in there, you get lucky. Really. It's really baseball playoffs, man. You really get in there, you get lucky. Um, that's true. Really, although that's really what it means. All right, Paratosh, yeah. what's up, buddy? Hey guys, how's it going? I sure that's hope good. you guys are not closing with me. Because I have no, no, I got one more to get to. <laughs> So okay, no, yeah, that's good to hear. 30, it's 30 30 30 here right now. Yeah, I I, I'm like on the East Coast, so Ooh. yeah, my one of my the first games that I watched on the East Coast. Jeez. So yeah, that fucking sucks. Yeah. So but anyway, I do have a hot take or not rather a take. Um Sam, since you mentioned about uh, why Steeper continues to cardle these guys, and I honestly think it's because he's struggling to get through to them, like just struggling to motivate them in any way possible. And I mean, we can see that on a nightly basis that they barely, like so many times you have seen this season where they come out with such a far effort. And I feel like most of it is because Steve Kerr has backed himself into a corner with some of the bizarre decisions he's made. Like, for example, last year playing Anthony Lamb and um, Pai Jerome over um, uh, Kuminga and Moody. Even this year, Kuminga literally had to go to the media to get playing time. And since then, he's looked basically like our second best offensive option. So... Uh, like he's caught with the wets before he's sided with the wets and they have let us down so many times that Draymond was missing for half the season because of his own antics. So like all of these decisions has like kind of just made him lose his authority in some way. Like he just can't get them yeah. motivated as a group. So I think that's why I think that's why he keeps trying to court them because he's trying any way possible to get to them to play a hard night in and night out. So that's that's my take. And uh, just one more thing before I drop off is, do you guys still are uh, no on Zach Levine for Andrew Wiggins next season? What do we think about that? Say it one more time. Uh, Zach Levine? Do we still don't uh, want him? <laughs> see, you uh, see how Wiggins is playing right now, Sam. I'd rather, take the, I'd rather take the salary dump. I'd rather take the salary <laughs> dump. Because so, like, I, you want a soft good tank, basically, then. I, I I want the dump to make a move to go somewhere else instead of being locked. <laughs> you know in that front office isn't doing that that much. So. Uh, let me let me I'm pray, down. buddy. Let me pray. I'm down. <laughs> okay. I'm in. I raise my hand for those that are on playback. We're still on playback. Ten thirty Monday night. Hardcore light go- airs goons. I'm in. I'm in. My hands up. I'm in. Give me appreciate activity. you, Peretosh. Thanks, Peretosh. All right, we got one more. This guy's been waiting the whole time. Honestly, I shouldn't have made him wait to end. 
because that just feels mean. New collar. Or maybe not a new collar. Maybe just a new handle for all I but know. Long time goon. I didn't even see the name. 30G. Um, perfect. Maybe he's not coming in. Maybe this is a perfect way to end it. No showing at the end. Worries no show at the top. 30G to get a no show at the end. I'll give, give, give you a third note. Let's give yeah. you another 20 seconds. Give him some time. Some time. I'm in on Zach Levine. <laughs> it's something I mean, new. I mean, it's if something you're new. I'll put it this way. If if you tell me it's Levine or Wiggins is back, well, yes. <laughs> Obviously, I'm taking I'm taking the uh the Levine option. But but I'm gonna lie to myself they can do better for a significant amount of time. Ah, there we go. Oh. Uh, unmute yourself. There, there we go. Hello, hello. What's up, man? Hey. Oh, I'm a long time listener. Actually, I've been on. I think it was the YouTube. I was I was on a while back, back in the oh, yeah. year's playoffs. But uh, good to be on. <laughs> but even with, with how awful that game was to watch, I still think we could have won. If Draymond doesn't fumble that that game that fast break, we're down two points with all the momentum in the world to win that game. Even with how terrible it was to watch. Yeah. But you know, that is what it is. Other things, Steph can't allow the game to start off like that. We can't get in the hole like that. And that mainly, to me, lies on Steph. Um, other thing with pods, I think he hadn't been the same since the – since the uh, – The knee? The knee. Change, the, rep, the referee's changing a little bit too. A little more contact mm-hmm. and hasn't been the same really since that also has been a part of it. So it could be the knee, could be some refereeing as well. But, you know, it has to do with it. And the one bright spot everybody's been saying is TJD's been um, – Fantastic, in my opinion. I think he has. I think he needs anywhere from at least twenty-five minimum to thirty minutes per game, at the at the at the least, in my opinion. And my takeaway from the game is, I just want to beat the Lakers in the play-in. I don't care. We can lose. Just beat LeBron. I can't. I can't lose to LeBron James in the play. Just beat LeBron. Then lose the next game to whoever. I don't care. It don't even matter. That would actually be the perfect way for the season to go. Just they beat this, LeBron in the play-in. Yes, we're all hyped, and then we watch them lose in yes. a uncompetitive game to yes, lose. Yes, that's all. I can. Just just put this godforsaken season behind. Us. <laughs> that's all I ask. You actually, know? you know what? That's a freaking perfect way. As a <laughs> Perfect way to end this show. Yes. Appreciate if you, man. Yep. Good night, fellas. Thank you. Golly. That was – if there's nothing else the Warriors are going to give us this season, a season full of of pain and tough finishes, just give us the win over LeBron and just we'll deal with the offseason after that. Right? It's perfect. 